Yeah, but do you know how batteries actually work? Well, I looked it up, so you don't have to. Uh, unless you also um, are, are interested in, in learning how they work. <laughs> then go for it. So I did go look it up. And after a little bit of extra reading and realizing how actually complicated batteries are, I'm here to try and explain some of it. But before I can do that, I have to kind of explain what electricity is. Electricity is the movement of electrons through a material that allows them to move through it or a conductor, like wires say, usually made out of metal or a solution that has dissolved ions in it. But now back to our battery. Really what a battery is, is this little packet comprised of three important components, an anode material, a cathode material, and an electrolyte that lets the battery stuff happen. What's going on inside the battery are two chemical reactions, one called oxidation and one called reduction. Now these kind of have to happen at the same time. On one part of the battery, you get this reduction reaction, wherein something gains electrons. And at one other end of the battery, you get an oxidation reaction, where something else loses electrons. So at the oxidation part, which is the anode of the battery, the electrons get taken out and then they end up stuck in the anode. Or if there's a wire attached to the battery, they go into the wire. And if that wire attaches to the other end of the battery, the cathode, the electrons can go through that wire out through the anode into the cathode and reduce the cathode material of the battery. Now you usually hook something up between these two points in the wire, like a light bulb or your phone or your game console. And that's where we get the electricity to do work. But wait, remember there's that third component, the electrolyte. So when these electrons get produced, you can't just make a negative part. You got to also like make the positive part too. You got to have charge balance. It's like a science thing. I, I can explain it at some other point in time. But those positive parts also are important to the battery working. They kind of got to move between the anode and the cathode. This is what the electrolyte is for. The electrolyte is like salt water. It's something that allows these positive cations to move from one end to the other. And when this can happen, the electrons can move through the wire while these positive charges move through the inside of the battery and you get the complete oxidation and reduction reaction that lets you get electricity out of the chemical reaction going on inside the battery. And this is fundamentally how all batteries work. So there are two types of batteries, primary and secondary. I know, not very interesting names. I'm not responsible for that. Primary batteries are the ones that you use like in a Game Boy or a remote. And when they die, you recycle them. And then secondary batteries are the ones like in your phone or your tablet or your laptop, which you can recharge them once they've gone flat. Now, how, what is the difference between these two batteries? The chemistry that is used to make them. Probably the most commonly known type of primary battery is the alkaline battery, the one that's used zinc and manganese oxide. And in this battery, the zinc forms the anode. The manganese oxide forms the cathode. It's just like those little like two AA batteries that you buy for, you know, your remote or whatever. As this anode material, the zinc drains, it turns into what's called zinc oxide or zinc hydroxide, depending upon what the, what the electrolyte is made out of. These batteries can't be recharged because you can't turn that zinc hydroxide back into zinc metal. Conversely, you can't turn the manganese oxide cathode material back into its original form either. This results eventually in the battery being depleted because there's only so many electrons stored in the materials that are used to make these chemical reactions go inside the battery. The magic happens with rechargeable batteries. In rechargeable batteries, such as lithium ion batteries, when the battery is being used, you're forming lithium cations inside the battery and taking out the electrons. And lithium, of course, is very happy to turn into a cation. It absolutely wants to be a cation. You get so much energy from lithium when you take an electron away, it's absurd. The other thing that's kind of cool is that with lithium ions, because of their chemistry, you can also plug electricity back into the battery kind of in the reverse order. And this allows you to regenerate that original lithium containing material. And this replenishes your battery. And these lithium batteries actually get like thousands of cycles before they really go bad, especially like the modern, newer ones, older ones, eh, technology advances. So in really short, because there's actually a lot that can be said about batteries, batteries work by taking a chemical reaction and setting it up in a specific physical arrangement such that you make the products of this reaction, electrons, flow outside the battery and into something that can make those electrons do work. 
And as long as those electrons can get back to that battery, everything's gonna work the way that you need it to. And at some of these batteries, you can put electricity into the battery and get charge back out of it later, which is kind of a modern revolution and a big deal for a lot of our everyday technology and the lifestyle we lead. But if you want me to get into that and like the history of it and the kind of science beef that went down when the discovery of batteries happened during the industrial era and all of that, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, I definitely appreciate if you hit that like button. But until next time, it's Kim Thug.